Hi, I'm Painter Master Elite Karen Boniker, and I'm very excited to show you how fun and easy it is to apply creative photo effects to your cherished photographs with the new Painter Essential 6. The goal in this lesson is to create painterly images and to minimize uh, any photographic reference. So let's get started. Let's begin by getting familiar with the interface and how very simple it is to really move around and stay organized uh, as you're painting. There's very little distractions in the uh, Essentials workspace and this contributes to being able to have lots of fun with your creativity and not be bothered by <laughs> all the many palettes going on around you. So let's uh, take a look at what we're going to be working with today. We have the um, floating color palette here, which is a nice option because we can just simply drag it over certain areas and get a nice color matching if we need to. So we'll use this uh, quite often as we work. Today we're going to be working with the photo painting panel, and this is uh, open. Um, when you open your interface up, this will automatically open for you. However, you can open any of these panels by simply going to the window menu and taking a look at the different uh, command options that are available to you here. The color palette, the mixer, color sets, navigator, photo painting, which is command 6 or control 6, and the layers panel. Any of these can be opened and closed by simply unchecking the option. You'll notice that I also have my navigator open, and I tend to keep my navigator open um, when I'm working because I like to use it as a second, second reference. Uh, it helps me establish my focal area more clearly uh, and to see my values from light to dark. Today we're going to be painting this lovely uh, portrait of Gwyn, and I think um, uh, this one really came together nicely. I tend to like to work with lots of texture, and so the chalk um, brushes came in handy in establishing some of that extra texture, and we'll go into that when we begin. So in my interface here, I have the photo painting panel open. Um, and uh, that is about it. So let's go ahead and start and open up our image and go through the steps. To begin with, I've opened my reference image. Uh, to do that, you'll simply want to go to File, Open, locate the image uh, in your file structure and open it. And uh, before we actually do this, what we like to do is uh, correct any colors, uh, any changes that we need to make to the image. So we want to first of all take a look at the size of the image. So we'll go to Canvas and Resize. And we'll take a look at the size of this particular image. This is a good size image to work with. It's 1500 by 2000 at 150 ppi. So this will be a nice uh, size to work with so there's no changes that we need to make to the uh, size of the image. Next, we're going to go ahead and on the menu bar, we'll look at this option called Effects. We'll open the effects and we're going to go down to something called tonal control and we're going to select the op option adjust colors. Now when it opens up you're going to notice that it changed the colors quite a bit and this may not necessarily be what you want to work with. So instead we'll go ahead and select the reset option and that brings that color back to the um, to the traditional or the uh, the original color that the image was. And from that point on, we're going to work with two sliders, one called the saturation and the other one called value. In the particular brush category I'm going to be working with, I like to have a little extra color coming through as I begin the auto painting or the photo painting option here. So 
With a saturation slider, I'm going to actually take the saturation up a little bit higher. And what that does is that pops all those colors out nicely and creates a nice color scheme that we can work with. I'll also take a look at the value, and if I need to bring the values uh, up a little bit, I can lighten the overall image, or I can bring the value down or to the left, and that will darken those values. But I think this is about right. This is a good value, uh, uh, good representation of values, and I'm going to simply go ahead and select OK. Now we're going to take a look at the photo painting panel here now that our image is ready to go and we have it set up in terms of size and color. And we're going to um, notice that on this photo painting panel we have a couple of options. We can browse for the image that we want to use for our reference or we can use the open image option which is the image that you see here or the image that is located on the canvas. It's the open image. So we can simply get started by using that open image. We'll come down to number step number two, which uh, when we go ahead and open the flyout, it gives us several uh, options that we can choose from, from uh, detail painting all the way down to pastel drawing. And what we're going to start off with first is we're going to choose this option here called Pen and Ink Drawing. And I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to then come over. Uh, first of all, we're going to begin by using Use Open Image. So we'll go ahead and select that image. And if you want to uh, change or save those changes that you've made to this image, then you can simply go ahead and select yes for changes. Or if you don't want to save those changes, then just select no. But in this case, I'm going to select yes. And we'll go ahead and save that image. And you can see now that when we go back to taking a look at our photo painting, you can see that the reference image is now embedded in the photo painting panel and we can start by using that particular image. The next step is to go ahead and go over to your layers palette and we're going to go ahead and add a new layer. Once we've added that new layer, this is the layer that we're going to start our painting on. And we're coming back to the number two, which is the auto painting option, and we're going to go ahead and start that option by selecting the start option here. And it's going to go ahead and start filling that in. And you can see that um, it isn't quite as dark as I would like it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and select that start option one more time and let it play out one more time. And you can see that that texture coming through is something that really looks great here and I, I really like what's happening on this image. So I'm going to retain that and keep that nice sketch um, available. I'm going to now lock that layer because I don't want to paint on that layer. The lock option is located on the layers panel and I'll go ahead and select that by clicking on the lock. And you can see that that is now locking that layer. We'll go ahead and go back to our canvas layer and then select new layer again. And this is the layer we're going to be doing our painting on. What I have chosen to do for the uh, color or the painting part of this is to use the option called illustration. And I love the effect that comes out on this. It gives a great look. And we're just going to go ahead and get started uh, with the illustration option. So to do that, we simply select the Start option, and we're going to let that go ahead and fill in our painting. And the real uh, lovely thing that I enjoy about this is the fact that we still retain that lovely sketch above, on the layer above, and then we have our painted image on the um, 
on the layer 2 and the sketch will be maintained and then at this point we can go in and start doing some fine tuning to our painting of Quinn. The next step we're going to do is we're going to move into some of these uh, brushes and talk about how we can create some uh, fine edges and bring back some of the detail specifically to the painting. When we examine the photo painting option a little closer, we'll notice that when we started painting uh, with the auto painting option here, that this option called clone color from source image was selected. And what that means is that it's picking up the colors from the original source image and applying them to your painting. We do have the option now to go ahead and take a look at this brush here called the soft cloner and it is located in the photo painting brushes under soft cloner. And what I want to do here is on layer two is I want to come around very gently on the edges here and just clean up these edges around her lips and chin and shoulder. Now it's important that this, the soft cloner is one of my favorite brushes because it doesn't go, it doesn't bring back um, photographic reference. It keeps everything looking very soft, very painterly, and that's, you know, kind of the quality that you want to achieve here. So you want to take your time and go through uh, if you're working on a portrait, whether it's a pet portrait or a, a child or an adult, and take a look at your edges and just determine where it makes sense to soften some of the edges and uh, bring back some of that detail. And this is the brush to do that. So anywhere where you think um, things have gotten maybe a little distorted, you don't like the, uh, the heavy texture of the edge, you want it to appear a little softer, this is where this brush would uh, come into play. Once you've done that, uh, the next step here is where I would move into um, is doing a little uh, of my own painting. So what I'm going to do here is go back up to the brushes and all your brushes are located uh, in this wonderful library where you can choose any brush that uh, you, you want to work with. In this case I'm going to work with the chalk, pastels, and crayons and I'm going to choose a brush called the square chalk. Now this brush we're going to go back to our photo painting panel and take a look at a couple of things here. If I wanted to, um, I could work, uh, as I start to, to paint into uh, this portrait, I could work with the clone color from the source image, or I could uncheck this and work with my own colors. Right now, though, I'm going to select clone color, and I'm not going to necessarily do anything else on the um, uh, on the uh, property bar of the brush, but I'm going to start by um, going into the painting and taking out and working into some of these areas where I see some heavy uh, photo painting pixelation is what I call it. Uh, anywhere where you've got a lot of this kind of digital uh, coming through. And what I'm doing here is just softly going through here with this chalk brush and just taking some of that out, uh, really working through those areas to soften some of those lines. And uh, what we get here is we still retain this beautiful uh, painterly quality, but we get out some of these uh, heavily auto-painted areas that um, I find just a little bit distracting and uh, can all of a sudden make a painting uh, look very digital when you want it to look um, more more painterly. So we'll take a few minutes to go through and uh, take those areas out. Now I've spent a few minutes going through this painting and taking those areas out um, that I mentioned that I felt were a little distracting 
And you can see now that those lines are nicely blended out, uh, and that was simply by using the square chalk brush. The final step that I like to do here is I like to work uh, with my own color choices. So what I will do here is take off the clone color option, use the um, sample uh, tool here, and sample color, and then uh, using my little uh, color palette here, I can choose different colors that, uh, you know, lighter colors, you know, maybe I want to add some highlights and work in some of my own color choices to the painting. One of the nice new features of Painter Essentials 6 is being able to work with a bit of paper texture. So you'll notice here that I have the sandy pastel paper selected. And the grain setting uh, is a nice feature because the we can control how much of that paper texture comes through uh, when we're working. Now I will use a um, I'm going to take clone color off and I'm going to use a nice light color here. Pick a real heavy texture so you can see what happens here. And you'll notice that the paper texture is coming through in this particular area. So the higher I set it, the less grain I'm going to get. And the lower I set it, the more grain is going to be revealed. So this is a nice new option that you can enjoy uh, working with. So here I can add maybe a little bit of texture. And just add those nice little painterly assets to the painting. To finish this off, one of the um, wonderful things that you can do in Painter Essentials is to apply uh, what we call an overlay. And a lot of times, overlays can be anything from another image to a texture to a paper texture. And in this case, what I've done here is I've applied a watercolor paper texture, which is just a JPEG image over the top of this particular portrait to give added um, texture, more traditional looking um, interface uh, canvas to work with. To do this, you'll go to File and Option Place. And if you have a paper texture in your, uh, in your files, you can simply place that and then resize it so it covers your entire canvas. And then finally, you would set that um, paper texture to multiply blend mode. And then uh, you'll notice that everything below this particular layer is visible and it adds that implied texture. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so you can uh, actually see this. I'll close the visibility option and then open it again and you can see how that lovely watercolor paper is kind of coming through and it gives that final look to the painting. So I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this technique. Um, I think from going through these steps there's no end to the additional uh, brushes that you can add, uh, the effects that you can uh, control. Um, the look of grasses that I've added here was done uh, with the default brushes in the new particle brush category. And the brush that we used here is called the Flow Fur Brush. And that brush, when used in just a right-left or left-right motion, can create this look of these really fine uh, grasses. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you go on to have a lot of fun with Painter Essentials 6. Take care. Mm -hmm.